What's up, you two? This is Rafa Trade Company, guys. Today, man, hope you have a great day on the market, man. So I'm gonna go over that stock that I talked to you guys about last night, and then we snapped that bottom. We definitely did because he did had a nice move this morning. If you guys caught it, that was a nice 15, 20 percent. But again, we're gonna go over all the press action today. What we have, again, especially some a few things that we might expect for next week as well, because it was crazy, man. This week was a roller coaster man we had <clears throat> ups and downs but overall trend was to the downside right so today we didn't really had uh you know any economic data right we didn't have anything of that but of course we had a sentiment of the market that was to the downside i mean we knew this how can we know this and this is why i say always oh, if you are in doubt then you are you need to zoom out when you do this when you actually go and look larger time frames you can see where are we heading so we opened the, the pretty much the week when we had this bear flag playing out and continuously we kept you know dropping and dropping and dropping as you can see here on the major time frames the spy was all this time below the 20 EMA that it was pretty much telling you that we were continuously downtrending right also I did talk to you guys and I told you guys this that the fact that the spy had this candle close on the daily below the 200 EMA was a very better signal right so we had this continuation day by day right and ended up pretty much closing so far at 410.68, right? We made a low of 409.21, which it makes things a little, you know, um, concerning as far as what we can expect next week, right? Again, we can speculate what's going to happen next week. And remember, you know, we don't know what's going to happen between Saturday and Sunday. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we had a war exploding, you know, in two days. So, I mean, anything can really happen, right? But let me tell you this, the things are not looking good as far as what we're going to expect. You know, SPY really is very strong, like a level is 400. So if we do get to meet the level, if we do actually break that 400, you know, things can get a little bit ugly, right? But today, really quick, just go over what we had today. <clears throat> it was very important to to understand what, you know, what happens every single day on the market and, you know, how identify price action movement, right? You guys notice that most of these days, price action is being choppy most part of the morning, and then like towards intraday and then, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, we tend to like pick a direction. So that's exactly what we've been seeing it, you know, several times. So therefore, for example, it was not different. You know, we can see those candles on the five minute, you know, long candles, long weeks that, you know, signify that there is choppy moment, you know, that is choppy direction. There is not enough buying pressure, selling pressure to just pick a direction. It just bounces from levels. So just, you can see it's by open at 414. It dropped straight up to support. Which was this for uh twelve thirty six and it bounced and then it make it retest the two hundred may I got to four fourteen again, which was your know, pre market highs, and continue downtrending right. So ideally here and then this is why if you see me I've been reminded in different places you know different rooms, wait you know be patient you know don't get into a trade right now there is market choppy why I say this because if you if you guys realize when you get into a trade when there is no clear direction. The value of your contract tends to drop. Why? Because that's what we call, you know, the, the you know, IV is pretty much, you know, consuming the price of the contracts. So that is why, you know, we tend to recommend again, you know, giving our guidance as far as, you know, wait for clear direction, right? To then pick up, you know, certain options for for your preference. In this case, the SPY, for example, I will have waited personally, you know, once we start having this drop right, around, 12 o'clock, once we close below the 220 EMA, 60, right, which was around 1240 at 412. That was your first signal to get inputs. Why? Because you already let play at all this choppiness. And then you can see how the selling pressure was building up here on the chart. So that was your first confirmation. The second confirmation was around 1255, closing below support, right? And then you get this and you were able to ride the downtrend, right, for 412s all the way down to support. Your first target was 410.59. Uh, and as you can see, I did provide guidance out there, you know, in different places. I was actually putting, you know, we are expecting the support, you know, how far can things can drop? It's very important to, again, you know, for beginners, you know, tell them and, you know, guide, give some proper guidance as far as how can far we go. So right, as you can see here, uh, at the beginning, I'm telling like, you know, waiting for spot to drop. And if we actually break the support, we're going to bleed towards 410.56 end of the day. And as you can see here, that was my first image when we were at 411. Once that happened, you can see little by little, we start dropping. There was 411 here, right? I was trimming profits. I tell my students 69%, right? We drop all the, we test support. As you can see, we literally dropped right here. We tested and then we had a little bounce. 
But at that point, we were at 127%. And remember, you want to take profits on your contracts. You cannot let just see the profits and let them go. Now, you have to secure some profits, trim your position, right? So we did that. We had a little bounce. And as you can see here, even if that little bounce wasn't strong enough to break the trend. So that's why as long as the trend remains intact, you can keep riding it. And that's what we had. You know, SPY pretty much, you know, it went from that to four. The next support was 49.52. <laughs> now you can see SPY continues dropping. You know, there was more selling pressure on there. And we went for 410. And then we retest the support that was mentioned here. As you can see here, it was mentioned. Uh, it was mentioned right here. See, next one was 409.52. So I gave the target and I put it on several places. You can see the target was met. You know, continue dropping. And once we test that support, then at that point you gotta be out of the position because remember, you can outhold your 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 hunters forever. You know, they're you're towards the weekend. You know, contracts are gonna be in losing more value as you get close to the you know to to the bell. So you want to again, you know, be out of the place. Ideally, be you know before two p.m. You know, two thirty. You don't want to hold that towards the end of the day, right? And something important, and I want to show you guys this. I was looking at bigger time frames, right? What is happening? And I talked about this before. The daily chart was on a clearly downtrend channel. And I went over this a while ago, right? How the SPY was being, you know, was being respected this downtrend channel, you know, bouncing from the trend line, you know, retesting the 60 MA, <coughs> excuse me, and rejecting and pulling back. Now we are actually breaking this downtrend channel, which this is a bearish, a highly bearish sign. Right. The fact that he broke that, you know, the channel, it does mean that the bar, you know, the bars, the bulls were not enough, strong enough to hold this trend line and then it bounced. Right. Because ideally we'll have we'll have seen a bounce here and then retest probably again, you know, these four thirties, right? Previous highs, but we didn't. You know, we broke straight down. So this is what actually gets to my attention that things can get a little uglier towards, you know, next week. And remember, next week I believe we do have FMC meeting, which is the November 1st. So things can get a little bargain and, you know, the market is expect we're expecting an increase of the rate hikes. So that is something to keep in mind. Also, this is a weekly chart on spot. And I noticed how overall we on the weekly, we had like a bigger trend. We were on a bigger uptrend, right? We were uptrending. We get rejected from these 445, 460, sorry. And then you can see how we're pretty much retesting that bottom trend line. So this is what I'm actually thinking about it, that, is actually aligning to the 400 level, right? So we are going to test those 400 most likely because we're pretty close. We're right there. So that is going to be a critical level. If we do, if we actually bounce from 400s, that is going to be the chance for the bulls to try to, you know, get some recovery. But again, closing on the weekly chart below the 20, minute, that's a one, this is, that was the first, you know, red flag to me that we might be ahead of a bigger drop, right? Again, we need to wait for clear confirmations. And what is going to be a confirmation? Then first, the second confirmation is going to be breaking this trend line, which is going to be the 400 level. If we do break this 400, right, most likely that was going to be also breaking breaking the 60 MA on the weekly chart. And that will indicate that we're most likely we're going to have a bigger drop. And it, what did I tell you guys? The 200 EMA is like a magnet of prices. What's going to happen is that we are going to drop towards that 200 MA, right, which is at 379.08. So we may see more downside in the market if things doesn't really change. And I think that, you know, FMC meeting is going to be a bigger factor of this. They can either change and bounce because it's actually aligning to what's going to happen, or they can actually, you know, you know, sink us all the way down, right? So you got to be careful. And this is why I said people don't go long on place. No, now this market is not really good to go too long, right? If you are a day trader, you don't want to hold that too long. Like ideally, again, you are day trading, you're getting out on the same day, right? That's what you want to do. And, you know, Tesla, <coughs> sorry. Similar situation, you know, that was a crazy week as well, how Tesla performed, you know, it was continue bleeding after that, you know, terrific and bad, bad earnings. Uh, you can see here, you know, and I said before, that was forming a double top that I kind of identify around 218 and also, you know, that rejection of the 20 MA, where I play out to the T, you know, we, we dropped from 218 all the way down to 206, right? Retesting that support that I mentioned, you guys, that 203.44 test. We tested, we bounced it, right? Again, retest that 20 MA, but reject it again. So things are getting tight, right? The fact that we keep rejecting the trend line and we're not able to break out, it makes things weaker to the bulls. So next week, something to keep an eye on, very important is if, if actually Tesla drops again towards this 203 
you know, 0.48, it's going to be very important to keep an eye on it because if we break, if we break this 203.44 support, these 205s, uh, we are going to go to this 200 level. You know, this 200 is a psychological level, uh, you know, which, you know, we might more likely going to see bull stepping in, try to, you know, hold this level. But similar to SPY, if Tesla loses this 200 level, right, things can get a little ugly, you know, to the downside. So while we are, while we what we're looking here, if we actually Tesla breaks, you know, these 200 levels, what we have support, we do have support at, let me check really quick for you guys. We do have a 197.41 and then we have 190.78, right? So we have another $10 drop if things do not change, right? Things do not, you know, switch a direction for a small, short, you know, period of time, right? So be aware of that. And if you notice, I'm kind of like more leaning bearish towards things because that is our current trend, you know? We need to, again, just, you know, be prepared to the worst. And that is what is going to help you guys to come on top. But again, we have to be still be prepared to the upside. And really, for me, honestly, the only thing that I, I will consider bullish and then you know, some sort of reversal in the market is if we are actually able to break the 20 EMA, which is the shorter, you know, trend line that we have and that we use. So if Tesla breaks to 11.51, then I can think that we might have some chances to have a small, you know, recovery rally, you know, maybe retest previous levels to 20s, you know, maybe catch up that 60 EMA to 25. So that is a chance there, right? But we need to see clear confirmation, right? Again, this is the reason why I do focus on confirmations instead of anticipations because most of the time, if you're trying to anticipate something, it is going to go against you, right? Now, NVIDIA as well, uh, crazy, crazy move. You know, we literally did what I expected and I talk about, you know, we were going to retest the 400 level. We exactly did what we, you know, what I talked and he actually went to 398.80 lows, right? Which is actually crazy. NVIDIA, this is a very important level on NVIDIA as well, right? This 400 level is very critical. The moment the NVIDIA breaks 400, we are, are, you know, we definitely we need to brace for a very heavy drop, right? We have the 200 EMA at 365.17, and that is pretty much the next area of consolidation that you can see on NVIDIA. So we break 400, we are going to start bleeding slowly towards that. And that is going to be a strong support as well, because you can see that is the start of the gap, the gap that was created in earnings when they, you know, the whole AI hype. So if we break that 200 May, then things can get ugly for NVIDIA, right? And this is something that we need to keep in mind, that we might be ahead and because, you know, charts are not shaping on the best way. You know, weekly chart on NVIDIA is looking a little, a little, not a little, but, you know, a decent amount of, you know, bearish momentum here. <coughs> so, we have to be ready for the worst. And I do think that this could be, uh, you know, small correction that, you know, the market is having after, you know, hitting this, you know, previous highs, right? So be ready for this, for these things. Now, while we're talking about our trending stocks, you know, what we're talking about yesterday, I told you guys that I snipe a bottle, although I did play out this one and in some for, part of my position is still on this, MBO, MBIO, I gave you guys last night and I told you guys why am I liking this one? You know, the offering on this one is close, set to close on uh, November, sorry, on October 10th, 30th, which is that is Monday, right? Hence why they did drop from, you know, the highs of 210 all the way to 121. If you watched the video last night and you took action, if you bought this dip today at 135, we had small, you know, small, uh, you know, rally, not was a rally, but a little spike today from one, you know, from 130s to 157, which is a nice 15%, you know, 10%, depending on your interest. So that was a nice day trade if you get into there. You know, this is a 5 million flow. And, you know, this can get, you know, this can get pretty, pretty volatile, right? So then you have to keep an eye on then Why actually, why am I actually liking this company? People wonder why I like this. Well, let me tell you that I do love to trade these biotech companies. And especially when I do see potential on this one. They did have, you know, the FDA acceptance of the, you know, the IND application of one of the cancer treatments. And cancer, man, it's a big, big thing on this, on this, on this sector, right? I've seen stocks with, you know, that they treat cancer when they have, you know, positive news, they rally like 300%, 200%, right? And let me make this clear. This is not guarantee. I'm not telling you that MBO is going to do this. It is a possibility, right? But no, I'm not, this is not guarantee, right? We are ideally, you know, really like I said for me, my ideal target, you know, I'm pretty much expecting if we have some certain good news, at least, you know, catch up this, this 60, you know, at least spike to 266, you know, 250s. That is what I'm looking at. 
you know, I mean, I will take it. I mean, we do have, you know, crazy volume, you know, crazy momentum. I think, you know, MBL can pull up like a $5, you know, that can really do it because I've seen crazy things. You know, I've seen stock goes from 30 cents to $20. So things like that, crazy, crazy had things happen, especially when the float is pretty low, right? The only thing that I need right now is just some volume, some positive news, and they are all up to the races, right? But what are, what are we expecting as well? We need to understand what are we expecting. So check it out. I was looking on, you know, on their um on their previous reports. So they're expecting, you see there, the phase two that is supposed to be in the trial, they're expecting to have some potentially be treated on the first quarter of 2024. So we're October, we had three months, <coughs> three, four months to possibly accumulate towards this news. Now, the stock will fluctuate. Right, we may see all the draw the news, you know, certain updates dropping from here to there. Will cool create some certain amount of pops, right? That equal actually, you know, be beneficial for us. You know, we can profit of those. But again, as you can clearly see here, they are trying to initiate this pivotal phase to a trial at least see I'll no later than you know, later than 2024. So they're aiming to this, you know, these trials to start in 2024. Right. But, you know, I do think that a company that's, you know, treating cancer right now, I mean, being this beat down, right, I do think that we are ahead for good things. Uh, the earnings is around the corner as well. They have, you know, 11.13 and 11.17. Uh, probably going to hold the earnings because that's pretty cheap. I do think that, you know, if we give us, you know, lower prices, I'll still accumulate those prices. Uh, you know, I think that there are, you know, good potential on this. You know, then the, and the bounce here and actually confirm this. You know, the fact that we bounce from this report, and, you know, we see bars stepping in here today. I, that actually gave me a little more confidence. And I can see how, you know, there's people, you know, accumulating these dips, right? I can definitely see that. So that is actually, again, you know, we are going to have to be patient. Remember, this is swing trades. They don't happen overnight. Take, some some of them can have, you know, can be days. Some of them can be weeks. Some other can take months. Again, this is why nothing's guaranteed. But as long as you have patience enough, then you should be rewarded. And then swing trades on this good setups are the ones that tend that up, you know, paying pretty good. And then if not, go look, you know, go look what we're trading all this time. You've been following for a while. We are being on a consistent straight winning. We trade PRCO, HOBC, CYBN. We keep banking and banking. And this is just some place that I've been giving to you guys because I'm telling you, man, on the Alpha community, we are banking daily. Apps and down and options, other stocks as well. Today, for example, you know, trade IBRX that it was only put on the private score. I gave it them, you know, as you can see here, I was looking at it and I was I was telling him, you know, I was watching IBRX, see this 2.32 break on that daily from the 200 mid tap when it was started spiking. I even just showed them how that move might happen. And you see, I tell them I was in at 235. When it spiked at 245, we took some profits. It started breaking out, almost, you know, continuously updating them through the process. And we add achieve the target you can see how i i literally circle that and we achieve that you know we were at 263 it's calling more profits you know we made a higher than 2.72 always you know you know setting your stop loss because you want to you know preserve some profits amazing trade right that's what's happening in the community and if you want to you want clear guidance on trades that's what's happening there you know what's good right but on that we have more things to come also update on cybn i talked about this one last night as well if you take some action you make some money today cybn Open pretty much at 50 cents. And I told you guys that the momentum was there. Chart was setting up pretty good for a spike. And of course, it was going to probably retest at 62 cents, which it did. So you trade today that from 58 to 62, that was a nice 50% gain, right? Now, what are we what are we waiting for this? Definitely remember the catalyst on this it is, of course, as well around the corner, right? Go look at the trial. You know, we, this is the news that we're waiting for. Just a, just a reminder and update what we're waiting. The first one, we're supposed to see the phase one top line result. They're supposed to be due the second half of 2023. So then this then the trial is supposed to be planned for 2024, but we are waiting that phase top line results from on this half, right? Also, we're also waiting for this, you know, this first phase one to eight top line data as well on this quarter, right? <coughs> so we got two things going on, you know, two different products, two different results. So things are there. Then and, and then do think that this is a, this is a baby uh company that has you know good potential right but again it takes time and of course it's setting up pretty good you know this daily chart very strong we see cg3 was solid pattern here on the daily chart you know huge amount of bars at the end of this close and as you can see every single time that we had this set up we tend to up make, make new highs like previous time once we get this three was solid pattern we went from like 67 to 71s 
here we had this you know bullish continuation we went to 67 so here i think that if we do have this momentum going on we might be able to read the 70 67 70s maybe even even if we break even if we break out because you can see last time we got rejected from the area if we break 70 90s you know we can go to 80s i think that you know the possibility is there so be aware that things can continue the moving forward right guys Again, we got more things coming, more updates. I mean, I want to do my DD as always and then, you know, come up with more plays. You know, it takes my time, always, you know, checking out, you know, dates, you know, checking or text, show interest. You know, I take my time, you know, reading and, 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 you know, of course, you know, going over the plays and making some DD. I mean, I love to do it. And I hope you guys are, you know, you guys are loving all this. Again, I do this for you guys. So don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, guys. We have more to come, more updates, right? Other than that, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Send me a DM, me, tag me in the chat, leave me a comment on the video. So, you know, I'm going to be happy to help you through the weekend. All right, guys, I think it's going to be it for tonight. Have a good weekend. I hope you guys bank. All right, guys, check the link or description as well. If you want to sign up for the community, that will have my trades 24-7 and my guidance. And, of course, to end the video, I mean, I trade, I live trade, you know, TPST, you know, to teach people how to, you know, manage properly, your, you know, your trades, right? How to, again, remain green, you know, position sizing. And I, I trade this for like 477s to 490s, which is a nice, you know, nice 2%, 3% return. But the idea is, is the challenge that I'm doing, you know, for like for people from 1K to 10K. Once we achieve 10K, we're going to go from 10K to 25K. And I'm going to go over that, you know, with, with, with the family, with the people, right? Because I think I'm helping people grow their accounts. That's what I'm doing, right, guys? So see you guys later. Don't forget to check the link in the description as well. I'll see you guys in another community. Bye. Take care, man. Bye. What's up, guys? This is Wild for Trading. Come on, you guys If you guys want to start making some money and achieving those goals and financial freedom you guys are looking for, you need to start investing in yourself. You need to start investing in knowledge. All right, so join me to the Alpha community. I'll be there with you guys, guiding yourself to the market. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow on the market because I'm going to get you guys get some money. All right, so see you guys.